team has a lot, but I think they won some loss to Miami. What makes you kind of to get that one on the road and then come back? I mean, it's always good to get one on the road. Honestly, I didn't know that stat, but um, this place is always a competitive environment. You know, the crowds have been tremendous for years. Um, I was just happy the way we pulled together. You know, we kept saying, just grind it out, you know, do what we do. Don't overreact, you know, at times. And we saw that in the second quarter, you know, where you feel like it's getting away from you a bit. So you overcompensate for that and uh, make adjustments, I think, unnecessarily at times. And it opens up other holes. Just keep doing what we're doing. Just trust it. And I give our guys a lot of credit. Uh, we did make some adjustments, but um, we continue to play with poise. Guys obviously stepped up late, made big, big plays on both sides of the ball. The offense was really whipping tonight. What kind of technical? Uh, we didn't run anything different. The fact that, you know, we played once again, uh, like the start of uh, our game last night. Great pace, great momentum, ball and body movement. Uh, we didn't hold the ball. Uh, for the most part, and um, you know, we started to make some shots. Is that why you have him closed when it's usually uh, Rex who's there? It, it's just a feel. It wasn't anything like Trez did or didn't do. Um, he was playing well. And, um, I liked his energy. Um, you know, we got into switching, and, and he did a great job of kind of pressing up, uh, forcing Luca to be a driver. You know, and yes, he made some some tough twos, but you know, you can live with that. Uh, they're very good, and he's great at just reading and assessing the defense. Anytime you put two on him, um, he has the ability, you know, to pick you apart. Yeah, no, he, yeah, he seemed like he's feeling fine. How do you describe how Brad played offensively? I thought he was great. Yeah, you know, I talked to him afterwards. and said, you know, it's a great sign of maturity. You know, I think he sensed there was a little frustration. It wasn't getting touches late in the third. Uh, we knew at some point they were going to try and get the ball out of his hands. You know, it's smart defense. Uh, but he didn't press. Uh, he didn't, you know, try to take it all upon himself. He stayed with it. He got off of it at the right time, made play after play. Um, and it's a, you know, it's a, it's a great sign of maturity that, you know, he trusts his teammates. The quality of the position is nice, Well, I mean, just to that point, you know, I think he's he's done it before. You know, we've seen him do it um, at times, you know, throughout this season. But, you know, the fact that he didn't get discouraged, he wasn't concerned about his touches or his shots. Um, and a lot of times, you know, scores or guys with that nature get a little bit more frustrated and they, they start to drift away from what their, their teammates are trying to do. He stayed with it, which was great. And we knew they were going to blitz him. Um, he, he garners so much attention, but he, he made the right read, the right time, you know, play after play. Has there been an effort to sustain this level of energy over the final? I hope so. <laughs> That's probably a question for Daniel, but I, I hope so. Now, he's not going to play, you know, out of this world every night. No one does. But, you know, I think if he continues to play with the same amount of energy, um, with purpose and discipline, yeah, absolutely. Chase. Wes, uh, you, you've talked about Corey Kispert's uh, cutting ability before. Um, what can you say about just the two baskets that he had there in the fourth quarter? Yeah, I mean, those are big plays. And that's not, you know, it wasn't a draw up or really, you know, I'm not going to say broken plays, but just within the confines of the offense, he's reading his defender. You know, you see the guy turn his head, you know, open up the nail, move cut, and he got the, uh, the payoff. So, you know, I think it's just a smart play. Um, he's learning how to, you know, read and assess those situations and make himself available. Um, and tonight he was able to, you know, get to the to the rim, finish through contact, obviously make those uh, and score those finishes. You guys allowed uh, 69 points in the first half, only 45 in the second. Um, what was the big difference on defense? All right, I think overall activity. Um, you know, we, we ratcheted up a notch. Um, we did make some adjustments just to kind of, give them different looks, you know, at times from possession to possession. Uh, but I think our energy and purpose was better. Uh, I think sometimes when you're scoring the ball like we did in the first uh, first half, you kind of get caught in that that lull. Where, All right, we're just going to trade baskets. Um, and that's what we want to try to avoid. You know, uh, the one consistent thing for us thus far this season has been our defense. So we can't lose sight of that. Uh, and thankfully, we got, you know, our defense into the game the second half, and it made a huge difference. 
And uh, I know it's only been three games since Davis came back, but just what do you make of his uh, early shooting struggles since returning? Yeah, I mean, it's I mean, missed 10 games, you know, and in that stretch. Yes, he's working out, but we haven't played a, a ton of five on five. Uh, just with the, you know, the, the way the schedule's panned out, we haven't had a ton of practice. So, you know, without having those reps and, and you can argue that, you know, our group as a, as a whole has not shot it well, um, aside from tonight. So it's not just, you know, an issue for him, but I think it's just a, a timing, getting his legs right. Um, he's too good of a shooter. At some point, it's going to it'll open up for him. Wayne. Hey, coach. Again, uh, pregame, we said it was going to take a total team effort. Uh, from your point of view, what are you most proud of with tonight's game, considering the back-to-back, um, the Mavs were arrested? Just what were your, your thoughts? Well, I mean, there, there's a lot of things. I mean, you know, to your point, playing the second night of a back-to-back, we, we don't have Spencer. Um, you know, it's just common theme, you know, for us, I think, in general, is just some, sometimes you got to pull together. And, you know, each, each night it could be a different guy, but at times this season, we've had several guys step up in key moments, you know, and even tonight, I will had a, had a, had a stretch, obviously to uh, Corey came in and impacted the game, Daniel, Pope, Brad. So, you know, everyone who played Kyle. So it's like a uh, team effort. It wasn't just one guy who just kind of led the charge. And we just, uh, you know, went with them at some point, everyone who was involved uh, made a play for us. And, you know, I think that's the, the hallmark of a good team. And lastly, coach, like you said, uh, it's a total team effort. Um, the, the Mavs have a, a, a size that, you know, is kind of hard to contest with. How do you, how did you all, you know, get in and, you know, play your game going up against a, a style of play where, you know, those guys are really limping along? Well, I mean, we didn't overreact, you know, um, and that was kind of the, the game plan going in. It's just like, they're going to make some tough shots. Do your work early. You know, you got to be physical with the proper technique. Uh, obviously, we, we want to try and defend without fouling, but don't overreact. I think when you overreact, um, you know, that's when the floor just gets really spread. And it's just tough to the way they move it and the way they shoot it to catch up. So um, at times, yeah, it feels awkward, feels uncomfortable when they're they're turning and shooting tough twos. But, um, you know, that was kind of our mindset. Let them to us to death um, instead of just opening up the floor and, and now giving them open threes. So uh, tonight it worked. You know, at times it doesn't always. But um, I give our guys credit. You know, they were able to withstand the storm and, and stay together and pull it out. Um, I mean, I think it speaks more to, you know, the type of identity that we're building and we've shown um, throughout the year in, in segments where, um, you know, we're a very resilient group and, um, you know, we responded. Um, you know, I think we had the stretch where we were one for four and, um, you know, for us to come in back to back, um, you know, playing a playoff team here in Dallas with a crowd like that down a couple guys. Um, you know, it just speaks volumes to um, the character of the team. Um, you know, I'll be making a joke. I'll be calling him Wilt Chamberlain sometimes uh, it's because he just be blocking shit for no reason. Um, it's really funny, but um, man, he's just done a great job. He's a young, he's a young man, um, still learning the game, uh, still learning how to be a defensive anchor, um, anchor at a, at a high level. And uh, he has that type of potential. You know, I've said it from the jump, um, but it's all about, you know, up here. And um, he's doing a great job of really just, you know, blocking shots, but also altering shots. And uh, I think he did a great job um, tonight when we switched with Luca. We went one through five, and he had a, a couple of nice possessions. Um, you know, obviously, he's a great player. He's going to make shots, but uh, I liked it. Pace, uh, the pace and the ball was flying. Um, you know, that's, uh, if you look at the past two games, um, the way we started out in OKC, um, I feel like that's how we played tonight. And, um, you know, the ball was just popping and it found energy and we got to the right people at the right time. How, how difficult or how do you guys keep a big picture in mind where you're evaluating the process over the result? In other words, if you, if the team as a whole just misses shots it would normally make, how do you not press? 
Well, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I'll give you a prime example. We played OKC, and uh, that was an ugly win for us. And uh, you're happy that you win games, but it was like a sour, it's a, it's a sour, bitter type of win uh, because uh, we had certain habits that we didn't stay connected to in that game. But um, it's just a little bit of both. Obviously, in this league, at the end of the day, you got to win. You know, it's, a, it's, it's not a gray area type of league. It's either make or miss or win or loss. So. Um, it's very important to win games, but also, um, you know, if you lose a game and you do it the right way and uh, all, everyone's attention is right, um, you got to just live with the result. Was this the kind of Swiss Army night uh, kind of performance that you can deliver? In other words, you did a lot of, a lot of things very well. I mean, uh, I mean, that's who I am. You know, I can do, I do it all. Um, you know, I, I can shoot, I can pass, I can rebound, I can defend. And, um, you know, uh, I work really hard on my game. I study the game a lot. I watch a lot of basketball and, um, you know, a lot of things are just paying off for me right now. There are a lot of guys putting you set the tones, Brad set the tone tonight with what appeared to be pretty perfect decision making. Selfless. Well, uh, I mean, Brad, Brad is a selfless person, you know, um, very selfless. Um, you know, obviously, um, sometimes he gets in that mode where uh, he sees the basket, and but that's okay. That's our score, and he does it at a very, very high level. Um, so sometimes he, he will get that tunnel vision, but at the same time, he's a, he's a very, very willing passer, and uh, he's going to make the right play, uh, you know, seven, eight out, eight out of ten times. But – um, he did a hell of a job tonight. He did a great job of just hitting shots. Uh, he looked like Brad Bill tonight, you know, just being super, super efficient, getting to the cup, um, defending too. Uh, you know, he had a hell of a game. Yeah. Chase. Hey, Kuz, uh, you guys gave up uh, 69 points in the first half and only 45 in the second. What changed for you guys on defense? I mean, welcome to the West. Uh, I mean, when you're out in West, you have you just have games like that sometimes. Um, the Western Conference has a lot more pace to it, uh, a lot more possessions, a lot more up and down flowing type of game. So, you know, for us, we got into a little shootout. And, um, you know, that's what Dallas wants you to do. They want to get into those type of high scoring shootouts. But we did a great job of um, <clears throat> switching our coverages up a little bit and just dialing into the attention to detail of what we wanted to do in their high pick and roll. You know, I think in the first half, um, you know, we stayed with our process and what we wanted to accomplish, uh, being in a deep drop and, and making those guys, you know, make tough twos. And, um, you know, if you watch the game in the second half, we did a great job of, you know, switching it up, whether that's blitzing the pick and roll, um, making our low man be activated or, uh, you know, at the end of the game, probably the last two and a half, minute and a half, we did a good job of switching one through five. And um, it's just credit to our team to uh, dial in and um, pay attention. Wayne. Hey, Kuz. Uh, you all were coming off a of back-to-back, and the Mavericks were coming in pretty well rested. With a win that gets you to 13-7, and seven, what, what sticks out to you most about this one? Um, you know, we were really resilient um, throughout the mix. You know, we got down uh, in the third quarter, which has been our Achilles heel, uh, the third quarter. And I think we were down um, like 71, 62 or something at, at one point. And, um, you know, we got the game back, you know, 70, 74. And uh, we just kept it rolling. We just kept it rolling. And, um, you know, our offense was kind of connected. Uh, defensively, obviously, was connected, holding them to 46 points. And, you um, you know, I, I think just the, the character of this team just sticks out uh, for this win. And lastly, Kuz, uh, you've seen it all. Championship experience, uh, played, you know, big time games. You never get rattled. And you and you said before, you know, you always shoot as if it's going in. Um, how has that confidence helped you so far this year with the Wizards? Um, I mean, it's helped me a lot. Uh, and for me, I got to be confident. Um, I was I was never a kid that was going to, you know, everyone said that was going to be in the NBA. Uh, nobody thought I was going to be NBA. People now probably still don't think I should be in the NBA. But, um, you know, for me, 
Um, I'm just a very confident person because I put in a lot of work. Uh, I have a lot of passion for this game. And, um, you know, I just want to be as great as I can be, whatever that means, uh, whatever that destination is, I just work towards it. And, um, yeah, I love it. I love this. Hey, great game. Safe travels, man. Thanks. I think we have one more in-person question. What is that word? Sustain? Like sustain? No. That was a big, that was a big word. But no, uh, what was that word again? No, I'm about to add it to my vocabulary. Tangelizing. Yes. That's like that. Um, uh, you know, it's tough. You know, it's very tough to sustain 120 points a night, honestly. Um, what we need to focus on sustaining is the defense. And, you know, we've had some slippage in that area over the past probably two weeks, week, 10 days. And, um, you know, that's what we need to uh, tantalize. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm out. Drop on that down. Uh, first one, praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This opportunity. Um, I think we were just being aggressive. You know, we were just moving the ball, moving bodies, um, taking advantage of certain matchups, and uh, ultimately it's just being aggressive, getting shots up. You know, when we limit our turnovers, you know, that helps us. Um, it's just a matter of getting a shot up. You know, every every time we can down the floor, and we were just aggressive from the start. The last five six games. Um, we've been horrible, you know, as starters getting off to better starts and kind of put that on my shoulders coming in tonight. I know one, I haven't won here in like five years. So that was one thing on my mind. And then two, you know, we've been getting off to pretty crappy starts lately. So uh, I want to make sure my aggression was was to the fullest extent from the get go and team the same thing. No, not at all. I mean, because you understand who we're playing against. You know, you have Luca, who's, you know, one of the best to touch a basketball. Um, and then you got Porzingis, who's coming into his own in their system. Uh, and then they have shooters all around him. Um, and Luca's the most high usage player in the league. So we understood the ball is going to be in his hand. And uh, we watched film on how other teams guarded him. And our initial thing was kind of shade him right and keep him from getting to that patent step back left. Um, and granted, when he got down right, he was passing the ball. He was getting guys lobs. You know, he had a lot of mid-range jumpers that he was just able to, you know, kind of nudge us off and get to a spot. So a lot of those, you know, you can get frustrated, but we didn't. You know, we understood. I mean, he's, he's a good-ass player. I mean, there's only a certain amount of things that you can take away. You know, you just want to try to frustrate him, make it tough for him. And, uh, you know, I think Kuz did that. KCP did that. Gaff did that. Everybody who, you know, had a chance to guard him were really – trying to frustrate him as best they could, you know, and then eventually we just stuck with it. You know, he was going to make some tough ones. He turned it over a few times and we got, we ultimately got what we wanted in the second half, but you know, the first half we didn't get discouraged. You know, we, we stuck to our scheme and uh, we made the proper adjustment. How many did you not get frustrated with the losses? Oh, no. I mean, it's like, you guys know, we, we play hell in another 24 or 48 hours. So, you know, he's, my dad always taught me to have amnesia with games, you know, um, good and bad. You know, you have amnesia. That game's over with. You move on to the next one. So, uh, but at the same time, like you said, we have to continue to build off of wins like this. You know, we can't harp on the bad losses. You can't necessarily harp on the, the wins either, but you got to, you, you have something that you can build off of. And this is a great win to build off of, for sure. Yeah. They brought two people to you who made the right play, and it was when they converted them. Uh, a lot, you know, because, you know, I trust my teammates, you know, I trust them to make the right play. And uh, it means the world to me not having to make everyone, um, you know, I can have guys I can throw the ball to and they can go get a shot and go create a play for somebody else. You know, I can have a hockey assist. Um, so those are all, you know, I'm, I'm definitely proud of. And it's a stepping stone for me. It's a learning process, you know, understanding the teams are going to double me. Uh, every night, teams are going to throw some type of junk at me. You know, they're going to blitz me. They're going to trap me. They're going to 
wrote pre-rotate early. Uh, they do a lot of, they throw a lot of things my way, you know, and my teammates do a good job of just being open, getting open, coming to the ball and, you know, being ready to make a play on the backside. How much of an adjustment is that for you to make, uh, given that you have to make everything? A lot. It really was because it's a total mental transition from last year. Like it's, my mentality obviously was, you know, I had to score in order for us to be in games last year. Like for us to be in the game, like not win a game, but to actually be competitive in a game, I had to score a lot of points. It's not like that this year, you know, and I kind of have to take that that mindset back at times. You know, sometimes I get the fortunate, you know, too much or sometimes I'm, I dribble too far into a defense. Um, and so it's just understanding that I don't have to do all of these things I would necessarily do a year ago. You know, I can kind of fine tune my game, trust my teammates to make plays and, you know, more or less kind of get exactly what I want on a nightly basis. And I'm not saying I didn't do that in years past, but this year, obviously teams are going to be more, okay, let's get the ball out of Brad's hand, you know? And so I trust my teammates to make plays and eventually that opens up the floor for me to be able to operate the way I want to. I knew this question was coming. Right. Uh, I would say I would take it for sure. Um, you know, I would definitely be like, damn, okay, yeah, I would, I would love to be on that team uh, <laughs> for sure. Uh, but, you know, we still, like I said, like after our OKC game, like we, we knew we couldn't win that way. We couldn't, you know, we weren't going to sustain, we couldn't sustain winning that way, you know, how we played in OKC. And we knew, you know, in order to be a good team and to beat good teams and beat the playoff teams who are, you know, championship caliber teams, we have to play with the high amount of IQ and a high level of effort, you know, which should be a given on a nightly. You know, the IQ is going to be tough every night because, you know, the, the changes, you know, there's going to be changes, there's going to be adjustments uh, on the fly. But, you know, I love the fact that we're really dialed in and we're in tune to each other and uh, we pick each other up ultimately. Ron, are you all the way there yet with that mental adjustment that you were talking about? Like, nah. Nah. I don't have a percentage, but it's, it's definitely still a work in progress. It is it is definitely a work in progress. Because uh, I have to understand that me being aggressive is the best for our team. And at times, I, my mentality puts me as a little bit passive, and I hate that. And so more or less when I'm aggressive, that helps the team. Aggressive attacking the basket, you know, looking for my shot. And if I don't have it, then move it. You know, sometimes I'm looking to attack the pass and it's like, okay, damn, that's not necessarily what you do. And those are how my turnovers come because I'm thinking way too much. So I'm aggressive to score. I'm aggressive to put pressure on the defense. It makes my game easier. And that's what I did tonight. Chase. Hey, Brad, uh, you guys had 28 assists. It was uh, one of your highest assist totals of the year. Um, were shots just falling, or was there something different about the ball movement tonight? A little bit of both. You know, the ball was hopping. I mean, the ball was was flying from the get-go, you know, and that's that's been a point of emphasis that we wanted to make. We've been making – we've been trying to make the five – the last five or six games, you know, uh, because we don't want to be a team that goes up against half-court defenses. You know, we become real stagnant. You know, we become real – one side of the floor dominant, you know, we have to eliminate that at all costs. And uh, when we get stops, we're at our, we're really good. We're really tough. We're really tough to match up with in transition. We have so many guys who can push, so many guys who can make plays. Um, and then ultimately it helps Chase when you're making shots. You know, when you're making shots, everybody's feeling good. Uh, you know, it kind of gets, gets your momentum going, gets you more confident and uh, it increases other areas of the game. That's just, that's just human nature, you know, so making shots always helps for sure. And going back to, uh, you know, the playmaking discussion and in and, and your, your own assists. Um, what have you learned throughout your career about kind of like learn, uh, taking what the defense gives you in terms of when to score and when to play make for others? Uh, I mean, it's, it's still a, a learning process, you know. Um, and it's a fine line, too, because there are a lot of times, hell, I feel like I can take anybody. But I know I can't. I have to get my teammates going and I have to, you know, um, make sure I get guys shots and uh, and that I'm aggressive at all times. You know, that I think that's my only mentality is just, just make sure I'm aggressive. When I'm passive, I'm shitty, you know, so just be aggressive at all times um, and put pressure, keep pressure on the defense. Um, and we did that, you know, it's, it's like I said, Chase, it's definitely a work in progress. Um, 
of of kind of balancing that mental, but it's a challenge I'm I'm actively learning and ready for. Neil. I don't have a choice, really. <laughs> hey Brad. <laughs> um, um, not about it, do something about it. <laughs> I'm curious, is this your boys' first road game? And if so, you, do you <laughs> consider them a good luck charm? Uh I have no idea. Um, that's bad, huh? Um, yeah, they've been an all-star, so yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say first row game. Yeah, they've, uh, and maybe playoffs too. Who are we playing in playoffs? Philly? Yeah, they were in Philly. Yeah. So, oh yeah, my little boys were in Philly. They was in that crowd. They was yelling at them people. Yeah, they, my little boys, they got a mouth on them too. So, no, nah, it was, they, I guess they are my good luck charm, man. I, I was happy to have them in the building. My family, my mom, dad, uh, my wife, my two boys. Uh, one of my AU kids, Nick Smith, was here tonight. His family and, and uh, a few of his uh, go pigs. You know, my boy Gaffer here, he he committed to Arkansas, big big Arkansas commit. So, BBE, we on the way. We are on the way. Thanks, Brad. Safe travels. My man. Last question to Christos. Hey, Brad, congratulations on the win. Those two back-to-back -back wins against the Thunder and tonight, what it represents about your character as a group? Uh, you know, we were able to bounce back and stay focused. Uh, you know, these were two different teams, uh, but we won in two different ways. And we understood we couldn't sustain, you know, how we played against OKC and think that was going to win us a lot of games, uh, especially coming into tonight, and especially with the weapons they have. So... Uh, we did a really good job of being locked in from the start to finish and and uh, and just playing together. You know, I think that's that kind of gets lost in the sauce a little bit. We play together and we have fun. We enjoy playing out there with each other, you know, and I think that goes a long way. Uh, and then, you know, when we're just making the right play and everybody's involved and we're active, it just it just makes the game that much fun and better for us. And how many steps in the right direction do you feel that you made as a team from the beginning of the season until now? I don't know. It's a lot of steps we took since then, so I ain't been counting Christos, honestly. Uh, but we, we still got a long way to go. Uh, we understand that we've made some strides. You know, we love where we are. We're at 13-7 and seven right now. I think if you asked everybody at the beginning of the year would they take this, you know, at 20 games in, I think everybody would, would say yes. So, um, you know, we're in a good position, but we still, you know, we got to build on this for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it was it was real important because, you know, this is the closest that I am to back home than anything. So I had a decent amount of people here tonight that was somewhat from my hometown and just from the general area as well. You know, I got a lot of I got a decent amount of family up here as well, too. So just being here, you know, I felt. I felt like a lot more comfortable just, you know, being around a lot of people I know, having a lot of people that, you know, are close to um, be at the game and stuff. And it was just, it just uh, felt real good, you know, having her family here. You know, I wish my parents and stuff would have made it, but they had to back out at the last second, personal reasons, which I understand, you know, but there's always another time to get them here. But other than that, you know, it was a, it was a real good game for me because I had a lot of people from, all different areas from Arkansas came in and watched and stuff. I took a picture with um, a guy and his family from my hometown. It was real good. Um, mm -hmm. really just come out and play my game, you know, not really trying to force anything, not doing anything that I'm not uncomfortable doing, just letting the game come to me, do the right things at the right time, being in the right places at the right time and protecting the paint, having a lot of energy on the floor. I mean, it was a challenge, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. I've never been in a position to where I've had to guard, I would say a guard of his caliber in situations like that, that many times, you know, but I mean, I stepped up to the challenge because I want to be able to, excel with my career, especially defensively. You know, I don't want to just block shots and stuff. I want to be able to go out on the perimeter and be able to contain somebody if I have to. So that's just the main thing. Just slowly working and progressing to be more and more comfortable, you know, sliding my feet a lot more. <laughs> uh, 
still know what you can accomplish? Um, really just, you know, the sky's the limit for me. If I can just be patient, take my time with it, and not really just, I would say, go out and really just try to force anything. You know, being patient on the floor, letting things come to me at the right time. Like I said, being in the right place at the right time, you know, making the right plays, grabbing rebounds, doing little things that impact the game in a big way. You know, setting screens, talking loud, having loud energy, little things. So I'm just, I would say, you know, doing the things that any guy that hustles and tries to outwork everybody would do. Wayne? Hey, Daniel, when you all are coming off a back-to-back -back and the Mavericks were well-rested, what type of win does this say about your ball club? I mean, it says a lot because, you know, we came in with a different mindset. Came in, you know, we know it was a back-to-back -back and they were going to come out aggressive. They were going to come out with a lot of energy. And we just had to come out and really just try to match that energy. I know we were coming off a back-to-back, -back, but it's no excuse, especially when you're in the league, you know, because guys aren't going to come out. They're not going to have sympathy for us, you know. So we just came out. We did what we had to do. We played great defense in the second half, and we locked in and paid attention to detail and did the things to help us get the win tonight. And lastly, same with OKC and tonight, you're blocking shots, but you're about of avoiding the foul trouble. How were you able to, to do that at such a high level? Uh, because a lot of guys, you know, they get in foul trouble with that. So what makes it different for you? Um, Really just not worrying about fouls, you know? And then when it happens, it happens. That's just my main thing. So I just try to go contest everything. A lot of guys try to dunk on me tonight. <laughs> so um, really just being in a position to where, like, if I foul, I foul. But if I don't, good block going on the end. I just dunk and get a three off. Hey, great game. Safe travels, man. Christos. Hey, Daniel. Speaking about your defensive effort, do you feel like one of the defensive anchors uh, of your of your team and what kind of confidence you get from your effort uh, on uh, on defense event? Uh, I mean, I have a lot of confidence because, you know, I'm one of the guys that quarterback the defense, telling the guys what's going on behind them and just being the main vocal point. And like I said, quarterback and everything that goes on, being that guy that protects the paint, it is there for any one of my teammates, guys on the perimeter, guys that are getting back cut it, certain things like that you know, trying to excel, like, to the next level of, you know, defensive play, trying to excel in my career, being one of the best defensive guys there is out there, just working more and more to, you know, I would say let people know that I'm a defensive guy, offense second. Thank you very much. Keep up. I think we have one last in-person question. Oh. No, it's okay. <laughs> feel great you know um had a lot of bumps in the road but I mean the road to success is not really just a straight line road you're gonna have a lot of curves you're gonna have a lot of bumps it's trials and tribulations it's just it's on us to figure out ways to get through that you know coming together as a team we're all grown we can figure out ways to do that it's just not a child's game it gets hard at times but if you got the right people and you know on your team you got you know the right wisdom you got the right mindset through and through, everything is going to fall into place when it, whenever it, you know, falls into place. Just got to be patient. That's just my main thing. Trying to go take everything. You know, like I said, we're not guys that can really just, you know, flip that switch. You just got to let the game come to us and play it the right way, play a lot of defense, get a lot of buckets.